Thank you very much, Sean. That's Sean Benite on that guitar. We actually have more people in the uh, room today. It's not like uh, shooting a special from some kind of like, uh, you know, bomber's bunker or something, <laughs> you know? We're kind of getting a hold of our stage craft here. Welcome to the show. Uh, if you're watching this when it airs on Longmont Public Media um, on the television, then I suppose it's time for me to be like, Wake up, Nana. Wake up, Nana, you left the TV on, you know? You should probably go back in the other room, get your blanket and go to sleep. But leave the TV on, we could fucking use the views. But this show's not for you, you should go to bed. You know? Um, quick disclaimer, of course, anything that I say on the show or any of my guests does not necessarily reflect uh, the opinions of any advertiser that may be on this show. They probably agree with me, but they probably would say motherfucker like way less. So like, you know, we release them of responsibility from what I say. Uh, notes from the last show. Um, my hand, I'm going to have surgery on it next week, looks like. Uh, that's why we have Sean here playing guitar, because I cannot play guitar. Um, and maybe, you know, if I get my surgery and do real well, maybe I'll return to being a lower mid-level guitar player again. <laughs> That's Kurt and Sean over here in the laughter crew. We need like a name for the laughter guys, right? This Kurt and Sean, my friends who laugh whenever I point at them. Ready for this? <laughs> it's so good. Fuck, it's so good. I want to bring them on all my first dates. Um, they're so good to me. Uh, but we need a name for that crew. It's mostly been, it's, so far, it's just white men <laughs> approving of other white men, which is like, whatever, welcome to Boulder County, right? But like, we need like a name for you guys. And we need maybe to get us like a female person to be in the laugh crew as well. Um, we'll think about that. For now, we'll call them like the peanut gallery, just the <laughs> nut gallery, because it's just you guys. Um, Another note from last show, I actually ended up doing a Jay Leno impression. I want to publicly apologize for that. Uh, and, uh, there was other dickish behavior that came out in the last episode, but mostly the Leno impression I'm here to apologize about. Uh, although I do want to like get better at that impression because I feel like I was kicking dicks in on that impression. Don't you feel like, Kurt, you were here. I was like really doing my and I get kind of giving it one of these or whatever. I feel like I, feel like I want to do impressions for this show. And the Jay Leno thing is going to be my first attempt, right? So it's like, um, this is my Jay Leno. You know, I kind of, hey, you heard about this news about it, about it? I feel like it's best if you don't even speak real words. If you just like, ah, what's happening? Hey, you heard about it, about it, about it, about it. So I want to like dial in that Jay Leno impression to just like one word. And this is me attempting that for you today. This is... Jay Leno responding to the phone call where he found out his dog was just hit by a car, right? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> That's my Jay Leno finding out his dog was just hit by a car. It feels a little morose, but also still upbeat somehow. It's the Leno way. Uh, what a piece of shit. No, we don't hate Jay Leno. Why is everybody always picking on Jay Leno? I'm such a nice guy. I wear so much denim. How could a mean guy ever wear so much denim? It's impossible. You know? <laughs> Uh, Jay Leno, uh, come and buy, come down to Walgreens and buy my new <laughs> denim condoms. You know, it's like a good Jay Leno impression. I feel like I'm getting better at it as we play with it, but I'm going to drop it now. I'm sorry about all this. Um, let's see. Today, our guest is uh, the mayor of Longmont, Mr. Brian Bagley, friend of the show. Um, we like Brian. Uh, we've been sort of like friends with Brian since uh, he was a city council person. Um, he, he's a Republican on the ticket, but he's, he's what I like to call a hands-down Republican, as opposed to like a hands-up You know what I'm fucking saying? He's like a nice, he's like Republican, not like Republican. You know, and like that needs to be fucking pointed out nowadays, because those little differentiations turn out to matter. Uh, he's like one of the nice guys, we like him. Um, one thing we don't like, and one point of contention, long-standing point of contention between Mayor Bagley and myself, um, has been the issue 
that I, we're going to have to talk about a lot on this particular monologue. And it's an issue that I actually challenged Mr. Bagley to a public debate on a few years ago, um, which we didn't end up following through with that debate. Didn't, he had to like take his kid to college or some fucking bullshit. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. We release him. He's a good man. But he didn't debate us on this topic, and we needed it. Because the topic was, what is better, Star Wars or Star Trek? Now, I know what you're thinking. How could there ever be a debate on that? Because the answer is obviously Star Trek is a better franchise in every way. And let me break down for you why you're right. Grandma, are you still awake? Jesus Christ, go to bed. You're not even going to understand this. All right, I wanna, what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about what I would love to have rubbed Brian's fucking nose in that night in that debate with my amazing points. I want to skim through them because this is not a full, uh, this is not a full um, shitting out of all the things <laughs> I have to say about that franchise. But first, I want to just talk about some simple, basic things about the fucking universes, right? Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, the simplest way to show the difference between these two franchises is their weaponry. Okay. Star Trek. What's like the famous, anybody? The phaser? We're aware of the phaser from Star Trek? Yeah. Named after, of course, how the weapon functions. It's a scientific, mind-forward show. The phaser. And in Star Wars, what's their famous gun? The blaster. Named after the fucking sound the gun makes. You know what I'm saying? The guys in Star Trek might as well, like... You know, they, they've got like a textbook to explain why their fucking gun is called what it's gun is called or whatever and the fucking star wars guys who might as well call their guns the pew pews or whatever it's exactly the same thing uh another thing of course the ships in the show um most famous ship i guess from star wars millennium falcon it's a fucking piece of shit and not particularly fast and like people brag about being able to fly it well but it's only because it's so poorly made that it takes like a skilled person to even get basic results out of it uh, whereas like in Star Trek, we got a whole crew, we got like, we're always pushing it to the max and getting great results or whatever. Uh, Star Wars, their ships are named after like, oh, it's an X-Wing because he's shaped like an X. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it is a lesser fucking franchise in every way. Who are the fucking, like, um, another thing about the fucking weapons, matter of fact. In Star Trek, right, we got the phasers, we have a stun setting because we, as the good guys, recognize killing isn't always automatically the right answer. Who are the good guys in the fucking Star Wars universe? Oh, the Jedi. What's their weapon? The fucking laser sword! It looks like a stun baton, but there's no stun setting. Because the only way the Jedi solve their problems is by attacking government installations. That's because the Jedi are a fanatical religious group attacking government installations instead of working within the system to change the empire. They're just blowing up government installations. They're fucking space ISIS. The Jedi are, are space ISIS. And like uh, the, the empire is completely inept. Star Trek is what would happen if like the empire in Star Wars was actually run well and by good people or whatever. It's the federation of planets in Star Trek. It's like uh, the positive future of the world. Star Wars is, of course, focused on war. There is no other answer than war. There's never anybody coming out being like, ah, oh, maybe cool we should be or whatever. Nobody's fucking saying that. You know what I mean? It's because they care so little about peace in Star Wars. Um, and then, like, the fucking movies fucking suck. George Lucas. You know, how many good Star Wars movies are there? There are like two, the first two. And then the more influence George Lucas has, the worse the movies get, right? And how many good Star Trek movies are? Famously, every other Star Trek movie <laughs> is not so great, okay? But there are fucking 13 Star Trek movies. So that gives us what's that? six and a half good movies <laughs> versus fucking two in the Star Wars franchise. You got New Hope. You got strikes back, that's awesome. Then you start like, yeah, yeah, we have a green lightsaber in the next one, go fuck yourselves, you know what I mean? And your bears or whatever, you know? God damn it. It's like we have Wrath of Khan on our side. You know, that's like, uh, that's like uh, space Shakespeare. That's like Terminator 2 in space. That's how good it is, you know? And the best thing fucking Star Wars is doing, they're like, oh, 
they blew my little gold <laughs> robot and shit. Don't you feel bad for me? I'm in an abusive relationship with humanity. All of the fucking sentient robots in Star Wars are in an abusive relationship with all the meat people. Have you noticed that? Everybody is a bad guy in that fucking show. I'm not doing this. This is happening in the franchise. You know what I'm saying? It's really not my fault. George Lucas is a terrible filmmaker. He's never made one good movie as far as I'm concerned. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Indiana Jones or whatever. No, because he's partnered with Steven Spielberg on that fucking franchise. And that's not fair to Steven Spielberg. He's one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. And he carried George's fat ass through those movies. You know it. I know it. Bagley knows it. It's true. I'm not paying them to laugh on that one. Did you notice I didn't have to point at them? That's because the fucking truth comes out. George Lucas is a terrible filmmaker. So bad he should be in no way uh, associated with filmmaking. He's like... Um, he is to filmmaking what Anne Frank is to tap dancing, except Anne Frank wasn't allowed to tap dance. You know what I'm saying? They have the same relationship. Shouldn't be associated at all with that fucking thing. George Lucas, worst filmmaker alive. Um, and the more movies he makes, the more he proves it. And I know when we're gonna come out and be like, oh, The Mandalorian's a good cowboy movie. Yeah, but like, we have cowboy movies, motherfuckers. You can't redress your thing as something else. Oh, it's a space opera. No, no, now we kick the door open at the saloon and I'm a fucking pew pew cowboy, whatever. This is a ridiculous franchise. Uh, I don't feel bad about hating Star Wars. Um, I want to release you from any guilt that you have for hating Star Wars. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I have a lot more to say, obviously, because God, I think I've burnt through a few minutes just kicking its dick in. It's just a real little dick, real easy to kick in, stupid franchise. You know, it's not like talking about Batman or something. It has like a lot of good movies and some stinkers, you know, whatever. We had bat nipples, so there's some, some darkness on the Batman franchise. But that's a way that I can do a better franchise than Star Wars as well. Just some thoughts, just some friendly fucking shots across the bow from my friend Brian over there. Um, which, of course, we won't take much time to discuss it when he actually joins us on the show because we'll have questions about like real life or whatever. So I'm sure that we won't, unfortunately, get a chance to hear Brian's rebuttal to all this. But uh, it, the, the short version of it is uh, Star Wars uh, can suck it. <laughs> yeah. This episode has been brought to you by 300 Sons Brewing. Have you ever been down to 300 Sons Brewing, my friends? Tell you what they don't do. They don't show any fucking Star Wars movies down there. <laughs> they are a, and in case you don't know this, we're in Longmont, Colorado, and uh, we're going to be kind of pointing to some local businesses or whatever for this show because, like, we love our community, and that's the reason we're doing this show in the first place. So, uh, 300 Sons is a hyper-local craft uh, brewery. Um, they also have um, not only a wide variety of delicious beers, the Captain Long, the fucking, mm. the Blue Corn Cream Ale, go fuck yourself, that's a wonderful beer. Um, and, and like that Blue Corn Cream Ale, and this, and I'm gonna go off script of course, because I live off of script, but like when I first got a glass of that, I was kind of just like curious, because these are my friends for a long time, I've known them since they started the business. And like I'd already had like one of their salted toffee earlier in the day, which is a fucking monster beer as well. But I ordered the blue corn cream because I thought like, oh, that'd be like a nice light blah, blah. It fucking knocked my dick off. It is like the sweetness, the creaminess. I recommend it completely. If you're a beer drinker, uh, this, is, this is big news for you in your life. If you haven't gone to 300 Sons, what your therapist might say is like you're refusing to live your best life. And I want to release you from that kind of thinking. Uh, if alcohol is not your thing, they also have uh, house-made root beer. Um, oh, God, they also do cocktails and ciders. Um, and God damn, if you had the burgers over there, you'll notice there's no laughter when I say that shit because that's stone cold truth that like hits in the deep part of your stomach. You know, that's like... That burger, they've, they've got like poutine. They do like this big ass cheeseburger that like, it should kill you. You look at it and you think like, I'm gonna probably die of a cheeseburger today. But instead you're lifted up on wings of angels <laughs> and, and carried to the, to the ample breast of the universe uh, where you will suckle blue corn cream ale. 
Uh, and they also do poutine. They do the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Um, rumor has it. Rumors? It's a rumor alert. You know, everybody relax, but this may be true. Um, rumor has it that the Times Call is about to release their Reader's Choice Awards for the year. And um, our local companies all care about that, of course, because like it tells you who in the community, you know, what, what the numbers look like. Um, and it's always like something that I look forward to reading in the Times Call. Um, and I think they're about to get 300 Sons listed as the best restaurant slash pub slash brewery in Longmont. Restaurant slash pub slash brewery. It's a lot of fucking slashes. Not for nothing. You think these slashes are easy to achieve? They're not. Like this is like a, this is a, sh a, a show that is about an idiot and interviewing. And there's like a little slash in there. We earned both of those real hard. You know what I mean? Slashes are not easy to come by. 355 First Avenue, Unit C in Longmont, or 300sunsbrewing.com. Um, if you hate yourself, don't bother, you know? But if you love yourself and you're like a great American, like I am, like, a, like anybody in this room, of course, would be, uh, then you're happy to go down to 300 cents, get yourself a root beer and a, and a fucking cheeseburger that'll change your life. Of course you will, because you're a good person. Um, my guest tonight is Mayor Brian Bagley. Now, Mr. Bagley is uh, a well-beloved member of our community. Um, he's been mayor for a bit now, but he's not running again. Apparently there's a big election coming up, and we're going to try and cover it on this show. Um, he's not going to be mayor again because I think it's been decided that he's too tall for the job. He's a very tall man. Um, and he's been the sitting mayor for a while now, but it's looked like he's been standing the whole time. He's very tall. That's what I mean to say. He's a very tall man. Um, when I first met Mr. Bagley, he's so tall. How tall is he? How tall is he? I'll tell you how tall he is. He's so tall that when I first met him, um, I thought he had dandruff on his shoulders, but it turned out to just be frozen hikers that didn't make it to the summit. He's a very tall man. What I mean to say, he's a very tall man. Uh, he's a very athletic guy. He's a, a swimmer. He swims laps at the pool. He was telling me about the high number of laps he swam at the pool. That's very impressive, I think. But he's a very tall man. So I think like when he dives into the water, he immediately hits his head on the other side. So the laps aren't really as impressive. He's a very tall man. That's what I mean to say. Uh, if you're home now and you want to put your hands together, this would be the time. Please put your hands together for our friend, Mr. Brian Bagley. Brian, would you please join me? Thank you, sir. Good to oh, see you. Thank you, Andy. Nana, you can wake up now. No, don't you listen you to this. You can wake man. up. Did this boring monologue? You can wake up now. Don't you now, listen now, to now this. Now we're going to talk about some real topics. Join us. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Evans. It's, it's just a deep pleasure to have you, sir. Um, so, Mr. Bagley. A, uh, you, might, you can call me Brian. May I? Sure. I hate to just be assuming on TV or No, what? no, assume away. Okay, I will. Brian, baby. Um, <laughs> I know that there's an election coming up, and that makes me curious, you know, about who's running, what the issues are with these things. But my real first question, sir, is like, the way I see it, when you run for mayor, your best outcome is you get elected and immediately half the public hates you. <laughs> and then the other half won't give you credit for what you're actually doing. That's pretty close. And then no matter what you do, you're just sort of fucked and you don't get paid well. <laughs> and then at the end, you're, you're like a, um, maybe like a husk of a person. Thanks for inviting me on the show. <laughs> that's, been, uh, Brian, uh, that, that's been Andy Epler, whatever the hell this show is, with Brian Bagley. I think he nailed it right, right on the nose, bud. Brian, right on the nose. Like, I know that it's a tough job to be in public service. And thank you for doing what you've done in our community. I appreciate the work that you do. Who the fuck would want this job? So the uh, so let me put it in perspective, please. Okay. So I am not running again in November. Uh -huh. I will never run again for another public office, mm -hmm. ever. Uh -huh. um, so I was on a uh, I was on a team that wrote a New York Times bestseller, the best selling hardback business book of all time, called Good to Great: Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't. It was published in two thousand one. Okay. Right. It is. Uh, it, it is. They, they call it the Red Bible in the business world. Um, I was the senior researcher on that. There were a couple dozen of us. Jim Collins was the author, he funded it. He was the, the brain behind the project. That entire project was researched in the library 20 years ago 
the best-selling research, hardback business book of all time, the research was conducted by hand, okay? <laughs> wow. So, which means that that was 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay, the internet was not utilized in that project. Yeah, it was all like chat right. rooms and porn. Yeah, yeah, it, not even that. <laughs> not, not even, I mean, there was just, there were no chat rooms. It was just kind of like, just kind of mm -hmm. late 90s coming about, right? Oh, I see. So approximately half the time, I've been, I've been on city council or mayor, I've been mayor for four, six years before that I was on city council. For 10 years, I have offered public service to the city. So 10 years out of 20. Yeah. Okay, so I'm only, I'm, only, I'm gonna be 50 next year. And 20, you look great. Thank Doesn't you. he look great? 20% 20, yes. 20 of my life has been this. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I was joking, but you pretty much, I mean, you pretty much said it spot on. <laughs> you know, um, you've got uh, 80, I mean, I, I don't want to lecture anyone, but because I was one of those people before I ran for public office. I mean, 20%, or I'm sorry, 80%, 90% maybe, just they don't even know who the mayor of their city council representatives are. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the remaining five to ten percent are supportive, but are aware, but they don't do anything. Yeah. And then the other five or ten percent are just complete and total jerks. You know, they don't agree with you, so they see you as evil and as the enemy. Right. And uh, most public servants, at least at a local level, just want to help. Right. right? Yes. And, um, and there's I, not like enough money in it to be crooked. The city councilman gets a thousand dollars a month. Uh, mm -hmm. Mayor gets fifteen hundred. Um, I've got a, my real job is I'm a law firm. I've got twenty four employees, two offices. Um, so whenever I hear people, oh, you're in the pockets of, ooh, yeah, I want that two hundred and fifty dollar donation from that developer. Oh yeah. Oh licking, oh, licking my chops. Yeah, you give me the campaign money right now. That two fifty and all. Rolling in it. Oh yeah. Yeah, roll so cash it in nickels and roll just, it. And so I'm just and so I just reached a point where it's like, um, it's time for someone else to do the job. Yeah. And um, I don't have the patience for it anymore. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And those who supported me and hated me or just endured me, you know, I'm very grateful for this experience. It was a, it was a, it was a great honor. But I think um, you did it in a noble way. But it's, it's at the end of the day, if you look at, um, we're just a very tribalistic society. And we are just, if you're either team red or team blue, Bloods and Crips, literally. Yeah. I don't care whether you're inner city or whether you're a, you follow national politics. You just hate the other color. Why? Yeah. Because the world sucks. We're unhappy with our lives, and we need to root for somebody. Whether it's, it's basic tribalism. Blue, red, cowboys, Broncos, and you're just like, man, we just gotta fix fix our sewer system. Yeah. We just gotta fix the potholes. We gotta. And I spent, I'd say, 80% of my time just trying to figure out how to keep the 5 to 10% of the jerks away so I could actually do something. And uh, everyone always assumes that you're looking for higher, higher office or looking for more power or looking for, and you're just like, shut up. I, mean, I would imagine it only gets worse the higher up you go. No, and so it's like, can you name one national, and, this, and I can tell you right now, I've never wanted to run for higher office. Name one national or state politician that everybody just goes, you know what? That's a pretty cool guy or a pretty cool gal. Yeah, that no doesn't one. happen. No one. No. And so it's like, Do you think it's because America is so sports-centered that we take that same mentality and bring it into politics, it's easier to think that way about politics. No, I think that I think that people are fundamentally, you know, again, my, my style is to offend everyone. Sure. So uh, I think that people are fundamentally too lazy to actually um, care. And I think that there's four types of people, you know, I mean, at least as far as in the political, political spectrum. I've heard it said that uh, you've got your uh, non-thinking conservatives, your thinking conservatives, your thinking Democrats or progressives, and your non-thinking that seems right. fair. Yeah. And unfortunately, the people crazy enough to um, get out and knock doors and show up at city council meetings are the end, the extremes. In Longmont, over the last 10 years, we used to have both extremes. Now we just have the crazy wacko liberals. Mm -hmm. And so, and by the way, you made a mistake. I'm not a Republican. Oh, I, I thought you were on the no, ticket. No, no, I'm, I'm unaffiliated. More I, of a libertarian, I, I suppose. I'm definitely libertarian. Yeah. You know, social progressive, fiscal conservative, which mm -hmm. means that... Everyone hates me. Every no one knows knows what to make of me. Yeah. I'm an issues guy, yeah. and uh, on Monday, if I'm uh, voting yes on your issue, boy, I'm great. If on Friday I'm voting no on your issue, I'm just saving myself. Uh, so, 
Yeah, but we loved my hands up, hands down Republican joke. <laughs> oh, it was a kid. I was the bad. I was chuckling. I You're was, not responsible I, I, for I it, laughing. but it is hilarious. You know, bite my tongue <laughs> with your Star Wars crap. Very I good. will just. <laughs> it's very hard. And maybe we'll find time for that. Maybe we'll get a special together once yeah, your yeah, life calms down exactly. a little bit. Yeah, I will give it to you because it's your show. Yeah, of course. It's and that's show. very kind of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. For, yeah. And like, I won't require you to be like, uh, please uh, just forgive me for being so wrong all these years because I, I, I love you. You're a good man. Bill O'Reilly, this is how we started. That's great. I see your future. This is great. I would love that. So we already know it's not Jay Leno. No, so it's got to be the other one. And frankly, I'd rather end up with a Bill O'Reilly outcome than a Jay Leno outcome. Because there are people that still like Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> it is true. I just want to like walk on my like little porch in Nantucket or whatever with my book that I had someone else write about killing Jesus or something. I would never write a book called Killing Jesus, by the way. You know? I don't know what to think of my own politics and religious affiliations and whatnot. Even I'm not trying to kill Jesus. Bill. Jesus Christ. Um, so, Brian. Yes. Um, we're coming into like an election. Yeah. Uh, what issues should I be concerned about in Longmont that I don't know to be concerned about? Which could be goddamn anything, right? So uh, I, I wrote. I mean, again, just uh, I think there's a uh, there's a uh, political there's there's uh, substantive issues, there's political issues, mm -hmm. and then there's just crap going on that you need to be aware about. Right? Yeah, um, this town is controlled by those people who are willing to show up to council, knock doors, or send in letters to the editor. Mm -hmm. So getting elected is all about me and my. So you've got a very small group of people that understand that. And so their voice is loudest. Everybody hears. And then they vote the way that they say they should vote. And that's dangerous. Because you're dangerous. having decisions made by non-elected people telling your elected officials what to do. Whether they're some of, some of them follow exactly what they're told. Others are just scared to vote against what those people say. And other people spend most of their time arguing with them. Um, it just it's just not productive. I so see. that is an issue. But That's it won't show up on the small town good old boy shit. Right? Good, small town good old That's boy. That's why we started this show. <laughs> you know, that um, effect. You know, um, then you get but I think that then you've got other issues that uh, you know, I mean just to be completely controversial. So one of the first things I did when I was mayor was I issued a mayoral proclamation saying that I was committed to one hundred percent renewable energy by twenty thirty. A week or two later, City Council made my proclamation a resolution. Um, I sit on the, as mayor, the next mayor, whoever's mayor, sits on the, basically the power utility board, right? So you get a voice in those kinds of decisions. Um, and there's, climate change is real, but unfortunately a lot of people look at Longmont in this bubble, and Northern Colorado in this bubble, and they make decisions that have adverse impacts on the poor, um, adverse impacts on the city budget, all in the name of, you know, championing climate change, but there's really only I mean, I never hear anybody advocating climate change ride their bike to the meeting, right? <laughs> so we're in the middle of a climate emergency, which I agree with. Yeah. But, I mean, if my house were on fire, I'd get my butt out and go outside. Yeah. You know, or I'd grab a garden hose. Yeah. I wouldn't sit there at a dais or at some meeting talking about, oh my gosh, our house is on fire. Yeah. Call 911, grab a bucket. Yeah. If it's really as bad as people say, which I believe it is, I believe it is. grab a bucket. Yeah. And nobody's grabbing a bucket. All they do is yell and scream and and uh, and talk about it's like it's like the Republicans. So it's like there's a meteor headed towards Earth. Okay. Right? The Republicans are going to uh, you know the the, no, the, the, the the Democrats are gonna point at it and say, Oh my gosh, it's gonna kill us and Demo or the Republicans don't care and they're not putting the, the necessary uh, technology and dollars towards addressing the problem. Mm -hmm. Republicans are going to be saying, nothing we can do about it. Let you the know, market fix it. Let, let the market <laughs> fix it. But in the end, the asteroid's going to hit us. <laughs> you know? And so uh, what people need to do in this particular situation, stop having more kids. Yeah. I mean, you, you, want, you really want to know the climate solution? Just being totally, totally honest? Stop having kids, which I think is laughable considering we're trying to... Me. And if you want to, Make less and, you, and you want to hear something that's completely over the top, not going to vote for that guy. Why are we fighting COVID? 
Why are we fighting COVID? <laughs> Thanos had something, man. Snap the fingers, get rid of half of us. I mean, I'm being facetious, but you cannot continue to procreate more and more and more and consume and consume and consume and think somehow that people are going to go, you know what? I think I'm going to start walking four miles to work. Or, I mean, when we have a bike to work lifetime, we're going to make a difference. A bike to work day every year isn't. And so it's like, I guess part of the reason I'm, I'm you, can, you can tell I'm a little jaded, it's like you spend so much time trying to placate people that want you to do this value signaling or this, this just show that you care, but yeah. really aren't making much of a difference. Yeah. And the main reason I'm not running again in all seriousness is I believe I've reached a point where I can't make much of a difference. I do things where I think I can make a difference. When I first ran, I wanted a movie theater, you know, got a movie theater, yeah. you know. Um, I wanted to see affordable housing. I wanted to see our, our downtown uh, begin to thrive a little bit more, but it was empty back yeah. then. Um, I wanted to see, uh, you know, I mean, I wanted to see all kinds of good stuff happen for Longmont, right? Yeah. Now the things we're dealing with, it's so ethereal and ideological that mm -hmm. it's like, you guys can talk about that every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I, got, I, got, I got a million other things to do, so. I thought it was, it, of course, a historic time with the COVID that came fucking through our community. It changed a lot about our community. Um, I'm glad that we're fighting it. I'm glad that we're probably end up still fight it. As am I. Yeah, you know, course, I, I, was being, I was being sarcastic. That I, we, I we, wanted we, to clarify yeah, that. Every, so every, no, no, everybody, that. everybody, um, everybody always, uh, my point is, people show up on Monday and say, we need more apartments. So city council, oh sure, we'll give you more apartments. Yeah. And then on Friday, somebody shows up and says, traffic is terrible. Mm -hmm. you know, no more apartments. Yeah. It just it just depends yeah. on who's there that day. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, just stick to your guns. But they come back, they'd be like, hey, we do have these apartments, but they're like two grand for a studio <laughs> apartment. <laughs> Go <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, um, was one thing I was talking to um, uh, Caitlin Cannon on the last episode, uh, Caitlin Rocket. My friend's confused when they have similar names. Uh, Caitlin Rocket from Boulder Weekly last week, we were talking about the homelessness issue yeah. in Boulder. Mm -hmm. And I know that we deal with that in Longmont as well. In Boulder, it seems particularly cruel and strange mm -hmm. um, the way they're moving through that. Um, in Longmont, I know we have different answers and we have something called the core team mm -hmm. where we can send, you know, people to fix problems without a gun. You know, it turns out that is useful as fuck. And I think like when people talk about like defund the police. By, by the way, can I just say that, mm -hmm. I mean, I do like his use of just the fourth wall. Yeah. You know? I feel yeah. like I'm here with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most fuckable man in America. Right Ryan Reynolds, you just put me at two. Um, but um, the core team is like a good example of what I mean when I say defund the police, because what I mean, of course, is yeah. reallocate police funding to reflect what the community actually needs. Because mm -hmm. we have these people that are homeless in our community or not mentally well, just trying to get by, right? Trying to find a place to sleep for the night. Right. They don't need some motherfucker with a gun to come take their blanket and kick them out of town. Right. But let That's me, what's happening in Boulder. But let me give you an example, please. Right? So let me give you an example. So an example that kind of merges the two, in all our, my, my point from what you just said. Please. So on Monday, We'll have people come in and say, oh my gosh, Mayor Bagley, City Council, we have homeless people in RVs parking in front of our houses and emptying, um, emptying their toilets all over the street. Yeah. You know, and we, 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 I mean, how many people here want feces and urine all over the street? That's a real problem. Right? So what do we do? We pass an ordinance. Mm -hmm. We pass an ordinance that says you can no longer park your RV on the street. Um, you can park it when you're loading or unloading, or you can go get a permit from the, the city and like up to three a year and park it for like a week at a time, so like three weeks total, in order to force people into RV locations so that we do not have a public health crisis, that we do not have angry uh, constituents, that we keep Longmont pretty, whatever. Friday comes along, somebody shows up, this just happened, a gentleman showed up on, on last Tuesday night and so Monday and Friday are, are symbolic, by the way. Yes, I see. Yes, and so uh, with sin symbolism. Mm -hmm. yes. So Tuesday he showed up and basically had forty tickets of him getting ticketed for having an RV and sleeping in an RV and parking on the street. Yeah. You know, and immediately people were in an uproar and, and council. Oh, what are we going to do about this? 
I'm like, pick one. <laughs> you know, you, you cannot, you cannot <laughs> have both. You can figure out a solution that will try to make everybody happy, but it's like, it's exhausting. I'm sure that's exhausting. It is exhausting. So, so going back to the homeless, yes, right? So if you were to talk to Mike Butler, who used to, which used to be our public safety chief. Yeah, I know Mike. You know, so Chief Butler would have said, you know, a lot of the very things that we provide by way of charity are bringing people here. You know, if you're down in Florida and you're talking to a guy who used to, you know, going up to Long and say, yeah, I was up in Longmont. They got free food, free tents. They have 30 different churches all willing to give us sleeping bags and tents. Well, what our police would do, they'd go up and down the St. Vrain River clearing out the, the, the camps. They were camps that were abandoned. Clothes, sleeping bags, and tents because the homeless essentially knew they could go and get more tomorrow. Why would I roll up my sleeping bag? Why would I roll up my tent? You know? And so it's not... So, yeah, you want... You, people need a place to stay. Yeah. But similarly, okay, you're down at Roosevelt Park. You have a bunch of people camping out there. And yeah, I'm with you. You need a place to say mental illness, substance abuse, poverty. M most people end up homeless due to most people I know can barely afford rent, and they work right? two jobs. You know. So here, here's a stat: over 54 percent of the people in Longmont are paying over 30 percent of their income to, to to the rent. That sounds true as fuck. Right. Yeah. And so so the question becomes: at what point? Do we have people left over who are capable of helping? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we're oh, so many people are in the same boat. So you have the people around Roosevelt Park saying, you know, they're loud. There is a criminal element that does come with homelessness. You know, um, when Mayor Coons, the mayor before me, uh, was mayor, I was his mayor pro tem, and uh, he left town for like three days. And we had like four four stabbings of homeless people, on homeless and homeless violence, right? And so I mean, until so he used to joke with me that. You know, I'm the king of stabbings. You, know, you, can't, you can't leave town for two seconds without something happening. But you've done very well over the last four years. We don't get three stabbings a day. Yeah, not three stabbings a day. You know it's gone down. It's gone down. But my point is that we I mean, call that the Bagley portion. The Bagley, yeah, yeah, yes, the Bagley portion. No, but you've got all these problems that you've got to deal with. That uh, that you, it's not simply a matter of get rid of the homeless no. or cut off cut off the the charity no. or it's a lot more delicate than that. I and think that if we show up to that problem too late in the problem, mm -hmm. we can't even see what the real issue was. And the real issue for homelessness is affordable housing. Yes and no. I, 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 believe, no. I believe it starts even earlier. Part of the, part of the reason why I wanted to do the mayor's uh, uh, early childhood education initiative to make sure that every child in Longmont gets a high quality preschool education, which turned into daycare, yeah. right? Um, but really what it says is if you really want to make a difference, Get every kid a great education as early as possible. That will have a bigger impact in 20 to 40 years on your homeless population, on your income level, on your uh, who can afford housing. Everything is impacted by that. That's true. You know, and so, but in a, it's, again, affordable housing. Even if we were to, there's two types of affordable housing. There's subsidized affordable housing, right? In other words, we're going to give you money to help you out with rent. Mm -hmm. And there's also um, just is typical rent affordable? Right. I can just, just like climate change, I can fix the housing crisis in Longmont. Elect me in November and I will make it so everyone has affordable housing. Meaning without subsidization, you too can get affordable housing. I'm just going to make Longmont ugly, horrible. Mm -hmm. if you, Longmont is going to be an ugly, horrible place to live. We're going to be, it's going to be dirty and crime ridden. No one will want to, want to live here. will be Detroit. You'll be able to rent a place. No, you'll be able to buy a home for $800. <laughs> That's a great deal. Then, so the kicker is the, the better the place, the better the community, the more people want to live here. And we yes. can only have 100 to 120,000 people living here. It's like Beverly Hills. You belong in Longmont. Yeah, you also belong in Beverly Hills. Do you want to go to Beverly Hills? Or are you going to show up to Beverly Hills and go, I demand to live here? No. Pick a spot in the park, bud. Yeah. You know, so so it's never going to be affordable so long. Now, again, I'm being a little, I'm speaking tongue in cheek here. Right? I think we're on the same page. So it's saying. never going to be affordable so long as we continue to make Longmont a great place to live. Then it even gets worse when you limit the supply. No longer going to build housing or apartments. We're going to start building and, and grabbing up the local developer land by way of conservation easements or 
or uh, open space. And so uh, that, that has a problem. Now, as far as subsidized housing goes, it's like there's not enough. I mean, if I were to sell my home, okay, let's suppose it's worth $500,000. I said, I'm going to sell my home for $100,000. How many people am I going to have wanting to get in? No, a million, billion people. Correct. Right? A billion. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to say, I want to quit the $400,000 because sure. it's below market value. Of course. So you have got people in line. You've got hundreds of people on a wait list for a for subsidized affordable housing. They've been waiting for years. The wait list is opened every couple of years. And then you get on and you hope you get a spot. There's just not enough. And even if we were to triple it, it's still not enough. I wonder, though, because when I first moved here, a two-bedroom apartment that I rented back in 2009 mm -hmm. was 850 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It's twice that now. Yep. You know? yeah. And what I see from my vantage point in the community is I see the people that actually create the culture that everybody else appreciates. Mm -hmm. That is largely the poorer people in your community. Mm -hmm. You got artists, you got craftspeople. Yep. That those people will be flushed out of this community mm -hmm. if these prices stay like this. So, and I don't think that the answer is educating the kids because you can have a real smart kid with straight A's, but if they're sleeping in the fucking street, getting oh, kicked out of the park by amen. the goddamn police, amen. that don't help. So right now, one of the issues, going to dovetailing into your question, one of the big issues is growth or no growth, right? Yeah. It's again. People separate into these two blue versus red. As right? if these balance tribes. wasn't the answer. Right. <laughs> but but right now, if Longmont says we're not going to grow anymore, your your housing prices are going to increase because now we're going to have higher property taxes, gentrification. Your elderly won't be able to afford their property taxes. Right. So they're gone. Yep. 27, 28% of Longmont is Latino, many of them first and second generation immigrants. Yes on the lower side of the income scale. Yep. So all of a sudden they're pushed out. That's right. You know, um, so you're looking at all, and then the mentally ill, um, you've got, you've got a lot of issues. And I find it reprehensible that the very people that will champion things like, you know, equality and equity, you know, and standing up for the little guy, you know, liberals that don't think, right, um, will often, uh, say let's don't grow anymore and then and then they champion that issue and then get the support of the very people that you mentioned that are going to pay and, and suffer the price I, so again i am floored at longmont's politics meaning i don't want to do it anymore i can't make a difference anymore because it's no longer making any sense and so many people have thrown up their hands and said i'm out you know i finally was like i'll get the lights mm -hmm. I'll get the lights, <laughs> you know. And I'm, I mean, again, I'm speaking tongue in cheek because we have some great candidates. Yes, right? of course, we have some great, great candidates. We have some good people that want to help. And we have, we have, we have, we have some, everybody on council. No matter which one of those four categories they fall into, for the most part, they all want to do good. You know, they yes. want to do good. Yes, we believe and, that on this and fucking show. Yes, they they want to do good. And so I just wish that people in the pub in, in the public domain would become more educated get more involved. I don't care whether it's writing a check to your candidate or uh, reading the local paper or the Longmont public media. Just get involved, be knowledgeable what's going on because I guarantee you, you know, Joe Biden and Donald Trump have a far less of an impact on your life than those seven people sitting in your local council. That's right. And that's a lot of why we wanted to do this show, just you know. to kind of get our local community service out in front of our people in a non-combative, not poisonous atmosphere. And not only that. Unless you're a Star Wars fan. Go <laughs> <fire>. that's, that's, <laughs> that's, exactly. No, and the, and the thing is, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not running again. Yeah. Right? And um, a lot of people might hear me talk, oh, God, what a bitter guy. I'm not being bitter. I'm a realist. Yeah. I'm I appreciate your candor. You know, um, I wonder, and this is, I guess, more of a philosophical question. Mm -hmm. I wonder when, for us in this community, growth quit being attached to quality of life for our average citizens. When you talk well, about a forty percent of the people spend more than thirty percent on their rent, that's fucked no, up. Fifty-four percent. Okay, so it's way out of balance. No, way more than half. So yeah. who's actually growing? Who's doing better? What do you Some mean? small group but of it, motherfuckers? No, no, no. So it's not. What, what, I, I, I don't know. Here's my question: yeah. When you say like. We need to choose between growth or stagnation. No, no, I'm not. I'm arguing there should be a balance. I'm arguing there should be a balance as well. I can, I'm concerned that when we talk about 
growth, we specifically mean economic growth. And that is only a piece of what makes a good place to live. I'm talking about in sense of growth, number of houses. Yes. Right. So I had an econ professor. You know, I took Econ 101 back in college, my freshman year. He always said, you can always explain economics in cornflakes and milk. Right. Okay. And so if we've got we, if we've got 20 gallons of milk here, and one package of cornflakes, and we both want a bowl of cornflakes and there's only enough for one of us. Right. I, I mean, I want it. and You want it. And it's the only food available. How much are you willing to pay for that milk versus the cornflakes? Mm -hmm. So the fewer houses we have, the people with money, and you go, oh yeah, those rich developers and those rich, no. People in California and in other places that have you know, benefited from their own growth issues, sell their house, have a couple million dollars after they sell their two bedroom you know, deplorable home, come out here, buy one for a million, have a million left over. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you need to increase your housing stock. Yes. Then the question becomes, yeah, but that's gonna make Longmont not feel like Longmont. True. That's what fucking happens to a town over time. That, 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 that's, as long as you have people wanting to move here, you know, yeah. you're gonna have to, I mean, you're, you're gonna have increased prices. And the only way to fix that is increase the supply. Because if you have 200,000 people wanting to move here, but you had 2 billion houses in Longmont, I mean, you can go to Beijing they've got, or, or, or Dubai. They've got empty, empty apartment buildings. And my conservative mind looks at that and says, like, oh, that's a money-making opportunity. I can build lots of, like, affordable housing, and all of a sudden, I'm the biggest motherfucker in town. Because, because when I moved here in 2009, the reason I chose Longmont was because Boulder was refusing to grow right. up or out. Right. And that economic pressure, I felt, was going to spew into Longmont. And lo and behold, it did over the last 10 years. I graduated law school in my in MBA school back in 1999, and I moved to Longmont because I couldn't afford Boulder. Yes. My, my daughter does not live in Longmont. You know yes. why? Yes. Because it's crazy expensive. She can't live. She can't afford to live here, which isn't yeah. necessarily a bad thing. You know, I, left, I grew up in Greeley, went to grad school in Boulder, but I chose Longmont because, well, it was a good town and it was affordable. And so um, there was an old... Uh, I, again, kind of a common theme, I guess, is what I'm saying is uh, there was an old story about these these uh, these uh, college guys being a musical artist. You understand? They needed a, they needed a piano. They wanted to practice for their jazz group. Sure. So they had this this large. They found this large, cheap, you know, uh, uh, beautiful piano. Okay. Beautiful. And they had to get it inside. Mm -hmm. They got to go up the little steps and through the door. And, Put it in the little living room. Piano sucks. It sucks. <laughs> and so they couldn't figure it out. And after just a few minutes of struggling, one of them says, just shut up, stop, 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 stop. Everybody just lift where you stand. They just lifted it and took it in. Mm -hmm. Right? Everyone needs to lift where they stand. Mm -hmm. Everyone's mm -hmm. like your analogy. And, and everybody is arguing about, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. And you need to stop driving and you need to decrease your carbon emissions and you need to stop developing and you need to stop building. Just lift where you stand. That's it. And do the best you can. Yeah, I mean, I agree with all those things. But everybody should be trying to curb how they affect the world. I think so, that's a, a, a libertarian and, idea, too. Because everybody's responsibility is to take up what the government's not doing. Is that, yeah, that's yeah. kind of the and idea. So, right? and, so, and, and again, you can't just put a mandate on don't have kids. No. But I'm just saying that, that we, we, we uh, I, I mean, just, we just spend so much time arguing amongst ourselves and ignoring the real issues. Um, that it's just, I'm just floored. And, and I have a lot, I, I do think that it's gotten worse because of Donald Trump. I do. I'm not I, gonna, so. I, 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 I am not a Trumper. No. Um, I'm, I, I don't, I never, I never said anything for or against him. Just, just, you know, it was an interesting moment in our nation's history. But I think <laughs> that, I think that uh, everyone is suffering from, from, everyone, whether you loved him or hated him, everyone's suffering from PTSD. That's right. Either you heard what he had to say and you couldn't stand it, or the response from the from the Democrats, you know, was so bad that it was also in many ways just as bad. Yeah. So we're all just so frazzled. We're traumatized. That we're traumatized. We're all yeah. suffering on a political level, personal level. And from the pandemic, that every ruined yeah. my fucking life. Everything. And so it's uh, we can talk pandemic, you know. Well, I but, think yeah. like that's an important note actually, because no matter where you stand politically. Everyone in America is traumatized at this point. Everyone. I think everyone is. Yep. And so, like, 
that's another reason to you know, like try and create an atmosphere like this where people who don't necessarily see things the exact same way can sit down and be like, yeah, but really we want to help homeless people. And the answer is not to tell them to fuck off. And, and, it's, and it's harder than just saying that or you yeah. here have some money. Well, yeah, of course. It's a ba- there's a balanced approach to be taken. I, I feel like as far as population concerns that we talked about, kind of we're joking about with the pandemic, I think the economic disparity that has fallen upon millennials and younger, those people aren't having children mm-hmm. because they cannot afford children. Mm-hmm. And all their fucking moms are like, when are you going to have a baby? <laughs> That's not my joke, I know. Um, when are you going to have a fucking baby? Have you ever heard about this? Have you ever heard about these people having babies? <laughs> They're not having kids anymore because like, like for me, I'm, I'm a professional artist, of course. So I make dozens of dollars a year. Like, I had a vasectomy for my own reasons, but, like, I'm so glad that I'll never make another hold person. On, hold on, hold on. You heard that first here, folks. Uh, you heard this first here. It's kind of like uh, the interview uh-huh. when they got Eminem to admit that he's gay. Yeah, yeah. But this, this is, this is, this is like, news. Ladies, late ladies. I'm clipped. That's why I don't jump on company anymore when they come over. You'll notice I haven't humped any of this furniture. I really chilled out a lot. This is way more chilled out. I like my dog. Yeah. I was wondering why you were so calm. I'm very calm. It's like, um, Brian, um, did you ever see the movie Terminator? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. In Terminator, uh, there is this human that is going to be born who is so helpful and impactful for humanity that our future robot overlords send back an assassin to hurt the child. Mine was sort of the opposite, where it's like, my kid's not going to be very helpful. <laughs> Let's flip that right out of reality immediately. My last official act as mayor of Longmont is to thank you, Andy Epler. Thank you very for much. For saving us from uh, future efforts. I will accept a dick-shaped key to the city uh, as a gift from you, Brian, and a thank you very much for offering it. made right up. Yeah, I appreciate that, and you might want to laminate it. Uh, I'm going to really enjoy having that at many parties. Um, By the way, I'm not running again. <laughs> <laughs> but I might. It sounds like a terrible job. But it's, it's, I'm always looking for a worse job. Um, final notes, Brian. Any last thing you'd like to say? No, just, uh, it, I mean, is uh, uh, I love Longmont. I know you, you know, do. Keep in mind, I'm not running again. Longmont is an awesome city. Mm-hmm. 90% of the problems we have is because Longmont is an awesome city. People want to move here. People want to live here. We care about each other. We care about people in need. Um, We're diverse. We want to make sure that everyone, we try, we try, most of us really try to give everybody a fair shake, you know? And, um, and so it's, it's great that that's the source of our problems, you know, because I mean, mean, we really are an all American city, you know? Yes. And, um, and we're like a fucking Norman Rockwell thing. And we are. And so, and so, and when I say I can't make a difference anymore, a a lot of it isn't because, oh my gosh, we're screwed. It's just that, I mean, some things are just out of my hands, you know? And so, uh, Longmont's got a bright future. And what's great about politics is it's a pendulum, you know, if the air gets too dirty, right. Or the park gets too overcrowded with homeless people or whatever, it swings back the other way. You know, you know, I mean, it might take a while, but we're pretty smart people. When we put our hand on the stove and it's too hot, we take it off and we turn off the stove or we get something cooking on it. I, I mean, but we're, we're, we're rational creatures. So, I mean, the best days are long on our head, right? I believe that as it well. It is. And, and, the, and, just, and, and uh, I was fortunate enough to play a very small part. My picture's on the wall and a hundred years from now, when somebody's looking at the wall, they won't even notice me. But I'm, I'm in there somewhere. They'll wonder who the fucking mayor was during, like, the most historic pandemic of our time. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, but no, Longmont's, <laughs> yeah. Longmont's great. We get, we, we, Longmont is just awesome. I love Longmont. I agree. Um, I want to sort of put a little bit of a, a period on this talk about homelessness, because I feel like we talked a lot about the issue and not very much about the actual resources available yeah. to people struggling with homelessness or um, just in danger of not being able to pay their rent. I'm thinking of the Hour Center. What is what are some things that we okay, have? So, so we have, uh, I mean, you've got the, the Public Safety Department has what's called the Angel Initiative. So if you know anyone, literally, who has a substance abuse issue, they're a meth addict, they've got a heroin addiction, could be pills, you can actually go to the police department as long as you, as an attorney. 
If you have a warrant, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> but if you actually have a substance abuse problem, you can actually go and actually the police will help you. They'll yeah. get you resources, right? Um, if you are, uh, you've got the hour center. If you're a Longmont resident, anyone can get a man. Um, even if you're from outside Longmont, I have yet to see anyone not get a Longmont ID somehow in order to get a man. Yeah, and they're even, not trying to tell you to fuck off. And even then, they will, can't give you a meal, but here, take this brown bag and take a seat at our cafeteria. You know, so very loving, very, you know, supportive. Um, like I'm you've proud got the, of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. You've also got the, you've got, you've got hope, you know, yes. which uh, they, they started off as a, not just basically a volunteer organization where they'd go off on snowy nights to make sure the homeless weren't freezing. You know, now they're organized, you know, and doing things like, you know, uh, teaching skills and, and helping people find homes and, um, and uh, so, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We, we have, so many services here in town. Um, I just didn't want to focus on the problem oh, no. and then not point at oh, yeah, what yeah, we're yeah. actually no, doing no, to no, solve. No, 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 it is. It's, it's, so it's, we uh, could do more. You know, we, we, we could do more. Um, the question is, you know, what do you do, right? And so There's it's like, a certain Venn diagram that happens between morality and what is difficult. Correct. And there's a certain spectrum, right? And if it's in balance, I believe we could be doing more and not really feel it pinch us that badly as a community. And I would agree with you. I would totally agree with you. So the resources are there. I'm not advocating you shut those off by any means. Of course not. Um, but uh, but we've also got uh, we've got a uh, veterans village, you know, that, that we recently built for our homeless vets. Um, actually, we didn't build it. Private developer built it um, under the city's affordable housing laws. Um, uh, we, we you know we've, we've got tons, and all you need to do is call the city manager's office if you have questions and say, hey, I'd like. Where do I go for this? So yeah. point you right to it. I just know a lot of people in town are be watching this, and I just want you to know that if if you are struggling with that stuff, we do have resources in town. I know we kind of focused on it the last call few me. episodes. Whether I'm the mayor, call Brian's ass up. Call me. I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Brian, God damn it! <laughs> you know that's well, how that I have, your phone you call have, starts. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear we'll get one more phone call about the jackhammer construction outside of a window. It's like, I'll get right on it. Build our city and fix our streets. Not so loud, not, not so, so loud. loud. Not so loud. <laughs> There's a pothole on 17th. Where? Just on there somewhere. So, last, last note, uh -huh. maybe. Um, you were the mayor during a historic pandemic. Yeah. And like, that's something that our, our community will be talking about for a long, long time. Yeah. And, a fucking tough time for the shitty job. You know, that's yeah. a fucking, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that did happen mm -hmm. that I fucking loved uh -huh. was when we put those barricades out on Main Street uh -huh. yeah. and the restaurants got to have more patio space. Yeah. That was the super tits. Dog. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Have you ever been to Rome? Yes, sir. Dude. Yes, sir. I have been in Rome. So. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Rome. Rome is awesome. So I went to Paris for two days and then went to Rome. I did a very similar thing. And then I went back to Paris and yeah. I'm like, what a miserable place. <laughs> it's a little ratty. It, compared uh, to, full of rats. Yes. Yeah, so, so Rome compared, I mean, Paris compared to Rome is like uh, a shot. It's different for sure. So, I mean, I don't mean to like, Rome should be paying me right now. Right? Oh, look, I just fuck Paris all day. I love yeah. you, Paris. You know, Tell yeah. everything I would say. Yeah, no, no. So, but in Rome, it's like, like they don't have Starbucks. You know why? Yeah, because all <laughs> coffee shops, you know, are awesome. You know, I mean, it's like I mean, it's, I mean Starbucks is the shadow of Rome. Also. Yes. No. Yes. So the uh, no. So the I forget what I was talking about, but yeah, I love Rome. No, I fucking love no, Rome. No, but say say so. I mean, like in Rome, you know how like they like sit on one side just to watch the view. Yeah, it looks like a stadium stadium seating on the sidewalk. Totally. It's like so I'm all for that. You know, Me too. I, I wish that we had that type of culture here. Where you just go, you know what? Let's go sit down and talk with our friends and family yeah. over a good meal. Yeah. Actually, no, not a, not a healthy meal, but a good meal. You know, I mean, pastries, pizza. You know, it's yum. You know, we're not saying bad shit about you, Rome. We love it. Yeah, no, we love it. Yeah. No, so the so the no, I, I I thought it was great, a great idea. It and did I, feel very European, and it felt like um, it did lend itself more to like seeing your friends when you're walking up and down yeah, the street yeah. and people bringing out dishes. It, felt more 
Treated. It felt like a Longmont thing. And, and it would be, and, 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 and uh, there have been all kinds of, for the 10 years I've been on council, there have been talk about shutting down Main Street, yeah. turning you know the streets, Kim Martin Collier, into one ways. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I don't you do hate it. that idea. I don't either. But you, also, you got the you got the park. You take away the parking spaces. The and people come. It, it's only a problem because how how far will you walk in Boulder? In Rome, how far did you walk, brother? <laughs> many, many. Right. Many, yeah. Longmont. Again, we live in a great town. We don't want to walk a block. That's an American thing. Meaning, for sure. all you have to do is park a block or two away, and walk. Yeah. But we want to park in front of the restroom. Mm -hmm. So we're, I mean, so it's, it's just culturally, we, Americans are so used to getting or wanting, demanding what they want and expecting what they're demanding right then and there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it's a fast food culture or what, whether it's, you're a politician, it's development, car, car restaurants. I mean, we complain about all the effects and consequences, but we want everything right now. And, and we don't want, want you motherfuckers to start driving like you're in Paris or whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the drivers in Paris are insane. They all want to die. They all want to die. And they live in such a beautiful place. I, 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 I have no comment on Paris on that. <laughs> they all are suicidal. I just, just pointed out, case in point, another example. You know, I love you, Paris. I hate you, Paris. You know, it's like the same thing. I love you, and I'm terrified. And I'm sure that you were just doing that as an example of my yes. earlier comment of yes. how we seem to be just correct, incongruent in our actions and thoughts. So I wonder if, like, um, I wonder if there's a balance to be found because, like, we're going to look, the government's going to put us back in quarantine again. I completely believe that. I'm not sure why they'll do it. Maybe it's the I was, terrorists. I hope not. The air I was, quality. I was I the know. first one. So sooner or later, every not everybody, but 95% of us are, are are done with the mask and quarantine. Uh, we'll, we'll put them on, but man, we hate it. We're emotionally right? traumatized. I am proud to say I was the first person to say, I'm done. That was about <laughs> two seconds after it started 15 months ago. Like, I can't handle this. I fucking hated it you know, too, but I'd do it or whatever. I'm yeah, a good community yeah. so member, it's, so blah, blah. It's, No, so it's, um, I hope not because. Um, do you make a little friendly wager? It, uh, we can make a wager if you want. I hope yeah, not. So, but, but I'm betting on quarantine in the next six it, months. You know, but but the, the reality is though that after Delta there will be another variant. Yep. It, it, and so the, this is an example of what I mean, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just going to pose a question. I'm not going to say what you do about it. I may not have the answer. Because if, if I speak too much, the paper says I'm a crazy uncle. Uh, and if I don't speak enough, then I'm accused of you're, you know, you're by, being by the, silent in a historic moment. Oh my gosh! I want to take med I want to take medical care away from the Weld County residents because I'm so duped into believing COVID is going to kill us all. I mean, the question is, if it doesn't go away. Okay, if it doesn't go away with masks, it doesn't go away with lockdowns, it doesn't go away with the vaccine, if it, if it just never goes away, right? How are we going to choose to live our lives? I mean, we're gonna have to, we won't have to tell grandma to go to bed anymore, you know what I'm fucking saying? And you know what, and, 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 all, and so for example, you know, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't think it was allowed at that. Because it's going to kill grandma. That's yeah, what the I, 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 okay, I'm not running, but if I was, I would probably leave now. <laughs> it's going to kill don't, grandma. Don't, don't, na Nanny, you just keep listening. She's asleep. Um, don't look at her. Yeah, no, the, uh, no, the, uh, it's, uh, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of people out there that, that think that we should do something because they think their actions are gonna change things. Yeah. And and they're wrong. Some of our actions will change things. Uh -huh. And then you have the people, right actions, of course. Yes, and then you have people on the other end, which are, nothing's gonna stop it, so let's don't do anything. Yeah, let's try and make money off of the asteroid so, impact. Again, and so what's happening is you've got the unthinking progressives, the unthinking conservatives, uh -huh. all out there on social media telling the world, well, this is science. Yeah. And none of them know what the hell they're talking about. That's and the, the rest of us are unthinking. And so the, the, the rest of us are like, yeah, better wash my hands, you know, stay six feet away. Yeah. Um, indoors, let's think about wearing masks. Yeah. And then beyond that, what do we do? Because yeah. we can't shut down society. No, that didn't you know? work great. And so when I, said, when I said certain things before that I got in trouble for, I was just saying, lock me up for eight weeks, but why? Yeah. Why? It's going to be here in eight weeks. Why are you locking me up? And don't just lock me up, tell me to go fuck myself. Like, send me a check or something. If you're like sending me to my room when I didn't do anything wrong. And so, and so, and so my, my, the, back when I resisted going in lockdown, my whole point was, right, was 
let those of us who are young and can work continue to support the rest of us. Mm -hmm. um, because in eight weeks, who are we kidding? It's still going to be here. Yeah. And here we are 18 months later and nobody's yelling and screaming. You know, I was threatened. I got a call from a very certain powerful politician saying you need to resign based on your comments on COVID. I told him to, you know, I, I said a bad word uh, 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 to go visit himself. One of the words uh, uh, that I like. Probably. Maybe I think you like this word. Probably but my true. point was that nobody's nobody's demanding I resign now because I mean, here we are not wearing masks. Why don't you wear a mask, wear a mask for the show? Like we're all vaxxed up, so we wouldn't have to. Exactly, but the vaccine, yeah. we can be have breakthrough transmissions. We can we can give it to other people. It's like there's just so much information out there. You can only do your best, right? Yes. And so I agree with that. And part. every and the anti-vaxxers and the not the pro-vaxxers. I'm a pro-vaxxer, but me as well. But beyond the pro-vaxxers, like the people who like judge and hate the anti-vaxxers, right? Ugh, it's tough not to get frustrated no, and stupid. I, I get it, but the reality is, if everyone would calm down. And actually calm down, take off the blue and the red patches, mm -hmm. and think, okay, let's let's just think about what would be best here, right? All right, I'm gonna avoid people for the next year. I'm not gonna get vaccinated. I can respect that, right? I guess. I need to go to work and support my family. I need I need to help run the city. I better get vaccinated. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we're all so judgmental towards everybody, and it's really not helping anything. I kind of agree with that. I definitely feel like if the anti-vax people are right and the vaccine is some strange poison and all the vax people are going to die, I'm pretty happy with that outcome because I don't really want to hang out with the anti-vaxxers. So I don't want to be stuck on this planet with a bunch of anti -vaxxers. So, And so those of you who I know that are anti-vaxxers, no, but so I, I don't like, I don't want to hang out with you. You seem great, but like not that close. <laughs> so my point is, Mr. Epler, yes, that um, I think that uh, that uh, there are a lot of crazies out there, mm -hmm. but it's a spectrum. Yes, right. And if we would all just do our best, not follow our ideology, but just think, calm down, not think tribally, and do our best, and admit that we're in for the long haul, and do what we need to. Like for my, for example, I have not seen my mom or dad except for one time, no, twice on their porch on sunny days, like 12 feet away, it's a heart, yeah. trans heart transplant recipient. And so it's obviously lethal for them. Yeah. They cannot, my mom and dad can't get COVID, right? Yes. Um, so we're taking precautions. Excellent. Everybody else needs to do that too. No, no matter what it is. And so, um, but, it, but it's not going anywhere. If everybody maxed up, if everybody got vaccinated, I don't know if that would, I mean, it would make a difference. I don't know either. I but would, gonna, of course, make a difference. But it's, but it's I'm gonna, no doctor. But we are also not going to be able to convince the anti-vaxxers. No, no matter how much you yell, how much you scream, <laughs> you're not going to be able to. My sense of it is we won't be able to talk to them. So. Well, I mean, except that most of them are going to get the antibodies. And, and we gonna, hope so. God damn want everybody gonna to vote, live. They're going to vote in November. I hope everyone votes. God damn it, I want you to vote, even if you're one of the stupids. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much for coming Andy, on my little show. Andy, congratulations on your show. Thank you. Congratulations on uh, the vasectomy. Thank you very much. <laughs> and there's nothing like surety living in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great yeah. copy, and, but it's a and, good one. Uh, you know what? <laughs> and, and, and next time, and if I ever want to do away with you, I'm just going to put a red shirt on you. Because in Star Trek, <laughs> it's that boring. You just slap a red shirt on somebody, they're dead. And the other thing is, all it is is a commercial. All it is, Star Trek, you know what it is? Oh, really? If you're in power, it's okay to fondle, harass, and bang whatever chicks in your vicinity. That's what Captain Kirk, sexual harassment, it's okay. That's a lot of consent happening on that show. And you but also, you, you, don't, you also don't have John Favreau. Oh, that's true. John Favreau, you know what? A chew. Oh, instant. Instant Christmas classic and elf, right? I agree with you. A chew. A chew. Started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A chew. Single handedly saved Star Wars. So, I mean, you have nothing, man. I'm waiting for season three on The Mandalorian to come out. Yeah. And I am waiting next week on What If, the new Marvel Cinematic. You know? Fuck yes. I we agree we on can't Marvel. agree on that. So, what I was going to tell All right, you. Look, there's a middle ground here, and it's so called here's, Marvel. Yes, here's what I was going to say. You know, that debate was so four years ago. It was, but I don't forget. And, and, and that's fine. So Star Trek and Star Wars, as it stands now, they have a lot of work to do to regain my trust. Fair enough. Fair but enough. Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially with this whole timeline variant thing that's going Come on. on. motherfucker. Yes. I'm telling you right now, 
That means new actors, we are going to see X-Men, uh, Fantastic Four, The Avengers, forever. Yes. New characters, bury it, baby. Just, just whip them out there. Hugh Jackman, bye bye oh, yeah. Wolverine, I'm bury so. it. I'm telling you, it's like... Oh, I love this. Oh, Brian, I'm so glad we got to end on a positive yeah. note with each other. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate no you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much for being on the show. And um, God damn it. Don't sneeze on your grandma this week. <laughs> See you next time. Easy enough. <laughs>